Sevilla. Uh, and of course, we have uh, uh, Yusek uh, Justado San Antonio, ASEC uh, GH Ambat, um, uh, Yusek Jess uh, Mateo, and uh, ASEC uh, Salvador uh, uh, Malana. So, yun po. Magandang hapon po sa lahat. So, siguro, uh, we're going to proceed po dito sa uh, questions po ng ating mga kasamahan sa media, ma'am. Ang unang magtatanong po ay si uh, AC Nichols ng uh, CNN. Uh, go ahead, AC. Hello, good afternoon to everyone. Um, ma'am, just yesterday lang po sa briefing with Secretary Harry Roque, you um, were quite sure na tuloy-tuloy tuloy na tuloy na po yung August 24 opening. But as it turns out, you um, had a recommendation to the president uh, submitted back in August 6 to postpone due to the imposition of MECQ. So basically, ma'am, these past days, you were just waiting for the president to get back to you on that recommendation na i-move na sa October, ma'am. Yes, but in the meantime, uh, while waiting for the president to make his decision and perhaps make his own policy uh, analysis and policy uh, choices, we have to stick to the law which allows us up to the last day of August for the opening of classes. But this morning, uh, the official decision was already transmitted. Uh, I knew about it uh, late last night. Uh, tapos na yung press ko natin by, by, that, uh, by that time, the day before. So, um, ngayon, we thought that we should announce it uh, as soon as, as possible. Uh -oh. uh, you will notice those of you in, in radio and TV, you will notice that I have not been accepting uh, uh, media interviews. And this is precisely because we were waiting for the president to make his final decision. This is what the law says. The president makes the decision in so far as opening of classes are concerned. If these are different from what the previous law says, kung pagbabago, pag change, it is the president's prerogative on the recommendation of the Secretary of Education. Ma'am, quick follow-up. Yeah. And just to be clear, it was the imposition of the MECQ that um, made you recommend to the president that perhaps we need to rethink the August 24 opening. Yes. My, my memorandum was dated uh, August 6, and before that, uh, we had a face-to-face -face meeting also uh, on July, uh, um, last day of, of July, and uh, we already discussed uh, these uh, issues. But I have to put the analysis, the implications, the number of learners involved, uh, the administrative costs, and so on, uh, the implications for the delay, for example, in learn, uh, the learning process of the uh, children and so on and so forth. And we put it together, submitted it on August 6th, and the president has made his decision based on that recommendation. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Um, last from me. Thank you. Uh, in the next few weeks, uh, ano po yung mga kailangan gawin ng mga guru natin at na who have been preparing po for the opening on August 24. Um, what has come out in our uh, in our um, uh, dry runs and simulations is that there are challenges, particularly in the two affected regions, kasi uh, sa preparation ng mga materials, talagang uh, nagkaroon ng logistical challenges because of the limitations of movement uh, ng mga tao natin. And also the fact that we have to organize skeleton forces, hindi yung full force because of the, as I said, the requirements of the um, uh, uh, IATF and also of the Department of Health. So, na limit yung ano nila, uh, uh, flexibility and readiness, etc. And these two regions uh, comprise uh, about a third of all our learner populations. Uh, malaking malaki by the millions itong mga batang affected nito. So we made uh, calculations and submitted these to the president as well as to the administrative costs which will be uh, entailed. And uh, ang question mo is what will the teachers be doing in the meantime? We have been receiving very useful feedback on our uh, 
on our dry runs and our simulations. We will work harder uh, on them. We will speed up kasi ang, ano, ang issue if you are reading uh, <coughs> social media, uh, there has been much concern about the production of the, of the learning modules. So, uh, magkaroon tayo ng additional time and space, particularly for these uh, two regions. Uh, in the meantime, uh, while the simulations are going on, patuloy ang upskilling ng teachers, patuloy ang pag-prepare ng ating mga learners for the new way, for the better way as the others say, or as I would say, <coughs> for the brave way for the brave normal which we are trying to create. Thank you. <coughs> so. uh, maraming salamat, ma'am. Uh, may we also acknowledge the presence of uh, Undersecretary uh, Revsi uh, Escobedo, who's also with us uh, this afternoon. Ang uh, susunod na magtatanong po, ma'am, ay si uh, Ina Hernando po ng uh, Manila Bulletin. Go ahead, Ina. Hello, good afternoon everyone. Good afternoon, Secretary. Uh, I don't know what are the implications of the adjustment in our school calendar, specifically yun pong number of school days. How will this be adjusted and how do you feel po about moving yung classes despite announcing that, that it is actually ready for you? Uh, Ina, those are <laughs> the concerns that you you mentioned are actually uh, our concerns um, as well, uh, <clears throat> especially uh, in the case of uh, the regions which are under low risk assessment, in the case of places where uh, they have zero uh, record of uh, new COVID uh, cases. No, so um, we we have to do uh, certain um, adjustments. We can already proceed uh, going through the uh, simulations of the classes. So, automatic kung bukas na tayo sa October, the children are already, uh, are already ready. At ang bottleneck nito, as all of you know, is in the preparation of the modules, the written modules, as well as in the uh, finalization of our television programs which we are also finalizing with various uh, servers. So um, this gives us time to prepare. But on question, um, uh, like all mothers would ask, what will the children be doing in the meantime? We will go through what we have simulated and we will keep in touch with the children. Because kung ang children ang tanongin mo, gusto na nila talagang pumasok. And I have talked with many children and children also have written me those who already know how to how to use the computer and to uh, communicate virtually with the secretary of education so ipagpatuloy natin ito lahat pero hindi lang natin muna i-formalize kasi kailangan uh, October 5 pa but as i said there are places where uh, zero uh, covid sila there are places na low risk uh, uh, assessment sila so they go through the the process of uh, opening school orienting the students etc pero number 1 ulit ulitin ko walang face to face because i am being cursed i'm being uh, excoriated galit na galit sa akin because i'm going to expose the children when that has never been the intention and also uh, online is not the only methodology. Um, we have had successful um, 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 simulations, for example, in Davao de Oro, using radio. Uh, we have had successful uh, simulations also using um, television and uh, very uh, moving stories of people from the islands who are not as exposed to COVID as we are here uh, in the two uh, big regions. So, ipagpatuloy yan, but not necessarily formalized, so that when the formal school begins, uh, talagang uh, they're already uh, completely ready. Saka mayroon pa tayong psychosocial preparation ng students, ng teachers. They have been undergoing psychosocial preparation because the approach to teaching is different from what uh, 
they are uh, they are used to, or maybe even I was used to uh, during uh, my time. So it's not as if the teachers will be doing nothing, the children will be doing nothing, and the staff will be doing nothing. Hindi ganon. These activities will still continue so that we'll be better prepared. At sa kung may mga glitches, kung may mga challenges, kung may mga may mga nakikita tayo na which should be improved, ito lahat gagawin during this interregnum. Especially for the low risk and the no risk uh, places. Thank you. So ma'am, tanong ko na lang po kung mag-extend po ba ng, kasi usually uh, ang end po ng, ng school year supposedly is April. So mag-extend po ba tayo ng months or kasi nga, as it is right now, meron po tayong Saturday classes. So paano po yung, uh, will it be a shorter, a leaner school year po ba yung ah. expect natin? Alam mo yun, nakita mo yun lahat. That is because you are a, a mother. Uh, for example, by next year, people's minds will also will also be on preparations for the forthcoming election in 2022. No, so maabutan yan at sa kayong closing ng uh, academic year, we have to make uh, the necessary adjustments as as they occur. And and besides, ang ating uh, pinaka stretch. Sabi nga ni President Sagarin niya talaga yung maximum allowable na mamiminimize ang harm but at the same time we continue uh, we continue uh, giving an uh, education to our children na uh, kaya napili niya yung October eh um, we have to make the necessary uh, adjustments lalo na on the matter of uh, the assessment of the students uh, and so on but we are also hoping and praying that uh, there will be changes in the health picture. Kasi ito, itong decision na ito is based on what is happening now, what is now the status of COVID, particularly in the two regions. And if the picture in, uh, improves, surely we will have to be making adjustment. And the president has that kind of power, which has been uh, given to him by the law. Thank you, Ina. Uh, Ma'am, last question na lang po on my part. Siguro po just a message to the parents, teachers, and learners who are na na-move na naman po yung school open natin. Thank you po. Thank you. Um, well, um, these are very uh, difficult uh, times. Uh, all of us know that, uh, Ina. And things change on a day-to-day basis numbers change and we have to adjust to these uh, new uh, situations but if things get better we can also uh, adjust uh, in a positive uh, way uh, i know that it is difficult for us because we are used to school calendars we're used to schedules ganito kailan ang enrollment ganitong araw ang examinations Ganitong araw ang last day of classes, ganitong araw, ganitong week ang graduation. Hindi na natin magawa ngayon yan dahil all over the country, the situation uh, is different. And also, sa buong bansa, nagbabago din ang, uh, ang situation which is affected also by the worldwide behavior of coronavirus. So, we have to be helping and understanding uh, each other. Uh, on this uh, on this particular issue, but we thank really the parents for their patience and their children who are very impatient, wanting to go to school already, for their understanding and for their uh, support. Thank you. I'm sorry. Yun po bang postponement both for public and private school? Uh, yes. Kasi may mga private schools na po na nag-open na. So, paano po sila ngayon na nakapagsimula na sila ng classes noong July? Kasi usually ito mga private schools na ito, attached sila sa universities and colleges and uh, local uh, universities, uh, locally established uh, universities. And so, uh, nag, uh, sabi na ang CHED na hindi sila affected by 
by the law on school openings kasi nasa higher education sila. Although, mayroon silang mga basic education uh, units. So, uh, nakaumpisa na sila. Uh, and uh, as I said, my favorite example is that school in Sikihor, June pa, nagumpisa na sila. And uh, I believe that they are doing well with the support of the local government. And sayang naman kung titigilan natin sila. Ang medyo sabay-sabay, yung hindi pa nakaumpisa at saka yung talagang pangmalakihan na kailangang uh, ayusin ng husto. Thank you. Thank All right. Uh, maraming salamat, Ina. Ang susunod na magtatanong, ma'am, si uh, John Vic Mateo po uh, ng uh, Philippine Star. Go ahead, John Vic. Hello po, good afternoon po. Question lang po on using the new law for the suspension of uh, the postponement of the opening of classes. At uh, wala pa po kasi yatang IRR or na-issue na po ba natin yung IRR para magamit natin yung bagong batas dun sa pag-postpo ng klase? Uh, that's an excellent question. Kasi ang provision dyan, may IRR o hindi, ipagpatuloy na ang implementation. Nasa batas din mismo yan. Oo. Hinihintay natin yung IRR pero ang si COVID naman eh hindi, naka, hindi naman naghihintay. Ang sitwasyon hindi naghihintay. So, ah, uh, ginamit na ng presidente yung power na binigay sa kanya ng batas na yon na siya ang mag-decide on our recommendation. Well, yung mga, the past few days, you raised some issues kapag, uh, kapag na-postpone yung classes. Uh, may mga malinaw na po ba tayong gagawin to make sure lang na hindi hindi mangyayari yung mga issues kasi sinabi nyo, na, naalala ko po yung binanggit nyo regarding dun sa readiness ng mga bata dahil tatanda sila kapag nag-postpone tayo further. Uh, meron na po ba tayong mga pagbabago na gagawin, for example, sa curriculum just to make sure na pasok pa rin dun sa mga pangangailangan nila yung lessons natin pa yung uh, uh, Tama yung, uh, yung question mo. Dahil sinabi na nga namin uh, sa report din namin sa Presidente na mayroong, mayroong trade-offs. no But uh, now that the President has decided uh, we will have to make the corresponding uh, adjustments no kasi um uh, siguradong apektado diyan ang ang curriculum uh, siguradong uh, affect diyan ang readiness ng ng bata uh, at saka tingnan natin kaya mahirap to go beyond october aabot ka ng one year you will lose six months of education for the child and the child might even forget what he or she has learned, uh, especially may two months na silang uh, summer vacation. Ito, haharapin namin. Dahil mayroon ng desisyon ang presidente, we'll have to uh, uh, find ways and means by which we can respond to this. Dahil uh, these are really uh, real constraints also and real uh, challenges. Na the parents especially are, are concerned about this. Last na lang po sa akin. Ma'am, balikan ko lang yung sa private schools kasi uh, I, I heard that you said na uh, kasama rin sila. But pwede ba nilang... Pakilakas paki, paki nga dyan. Uh, yes, ma'am. Ma yung sa private schools, kasi you mentioned na kasama rin sila. Just want to clarify, kasi yung iba gusto nang mag-open by August 24. Pwede pa nilang gamitin yung autonomy nila dun sa, sa pag-ayos uh, ng guidelines nila. We have the manual for private schools. Pwede ba nilang gamitin yun para mag-open sila earlier than October kasi may mga concerns sa pasweldo ng teachers among other among other issues sa private school sector. Ah, uh, yun nga ang yun nga ang sinabi ko. Maraming private schools bahagi sila ng universities. Ah, uh, bahagi sila ng uh, local uh, locally built uh, uh, universities and colleges. Mga sinasabi nilang uh, LICs ba yon, uh, local institutions, no? So, ah uh, Sabi nila, we are institutions of higher learning. It so happens that they have uh, basic education uh, units. So, sa tingin ng CHED, hindi sila apektado nitong, uh, nitong batas na ito. And so, they are, they are uh, proceeding and, uh, and we respect that. Mayroong mga eskwelahan, I know, na nag-umpisa na sila ng June, pero... Uh, ang constraint lamang talaga dito ay yung requirements ng MECQ. Kung Metro Manila ka, 
medyo may challenge to to implement and to continue with learning as as planned dahil nga uh, dahil sa mga requirements ng ano ng uh, requirements ng uh, uh, IATF at saka ng Department of Health mayroon talagang limitations like kami sa aming central office uh, we have to resort to we have to resort to um, mga uh, skeleton forces uh, etc so the capacity to work and to produce is vastly uh, uh, reduced pero uh, be as it may we have to be making adjustment it is a challenge to the department and we seek your understanding and your your support because uh, nasabi na nga namin talaga itong mga uh, challenges na ito and they are there we recognize we are not ignoring them so the thing is to find ways of uh, adjusting and um, making sure na una yung yung required uh, uh, sinasabi nating learning competences masusunod na hindi tayo madidistract sa uh, fascination and obsession with elections uh, by next year na hindi tayo ma-affect masyado sa downturn ng economy hopefully mag-recover na ang economy maraming mga factors but uh, it's not as if we have a choice. Nandiyan na sila eh. At saka na-recognize na. The, the good thing is that we recognize them. And since we recognize them, uh, we'll have to do something about it. And we need uh, the help of media. We need the help of, of, of the various sectors who consider education as very important. After this press conference, uh, we're going to have a whole day meeting of our uh, management uh, committee. And we will be discussing in detail. We will be requiring all our regional offices to submit uh, the uh, strategies which they are thinking of in order to respond to challenges which we already know. Uh, alam niyo naman yan, rin recite namin yan palagi. Alam naman namin kung ano yung challenges na yan. Alam naman namin kung ano yung uh, kung ano yung mga trade-offs. Uh, while we are trying to adjust to, yeah. to the COVID situation in these two uh, regions. Uh, kasama na doon, of course, yung mga administrative costs and requirements. So, uh, lahat yan sinabi namin sa Presidente and nag gumawa siya ng choice. Kasi para sa kanya, ang importante is to keep the children and the teachers absolutely safe. Salamat po. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, and uh, thank you so much, uh, Jan Vic. Ang susunod, ma'am, si uh, Jody po, Agoncillo ng Inquirer. Go ahead, Jody. Hi, hi ma'am. Hi, Secretary hi, hi. Good afternoon po. Ma'am, uh, actually, nasagot na po yung sa IRR. Um, nabanggit lang po kasi in a Senate meeting, or hearing ni Senator Francis Tolentino na wala pa raw pong, um, aside from the IRR, wala pa raw daw pong public consultations with um, teachers and students. Uh, we, we cannot say that because, we, uh, as I said, uh, sa social media, the, the teachers are talking to us all the time. Uh, the parents are talking to us uh, all the time. And we conduct surveys. Um, we cannot get together in the usual consultation. Dati kasi, we would have annual conferences on education. You have thousands of people gathered in one in one place, and uh, going through all the all the challenges, the problems, the excitement of education. Hindi natin yan magagawa. Marami tayong ginagawa virtually. At saka pinfocus natin sa mga situations sa regions. At saka ang mga regions yun ang nagkakandak ng mga consultations at their level. Dahil magkaiba yung uh, magkaiba yung situation like uh, on the matter for example of uh, as I said yung mga risk uh, assessments uh, you would have one region na uh, isang siyudad napakataas ng level ng COVID but the surrounding provinces are halos wala no? and then uh, of course you, you, you wonder and uh, on the matter, for example, of the use of schoolhouses, we have provinces and local governments who do not ask to use our schoolhouses. Well, there are those who want to use all our schoolhouses. So itong mga bagay na ito, 
uh, hindi natin mada magawa na yung mass consultation na nasanayan na natin. At binibigyan naman tayo ng feedback. Dahil nga, uh, dahil nga sa napaka-active sa social media, ang daming uh, sulat na natatanggap natin uh, at saka immediate, very fast. At saka yung consultation, ang daming hearings, halos araw-araw mayroong hearing in both houses wherein affected sectors are also invited and they also say their piece. So hindi natin masasabing uh, walang consultation dahil mismo ang Senado nagkoconsulta, mismo ang Congress nagkoconsulta, mismo kami nagkoconsulta. At saka yung recommendations uh, namin na binigay sa Presidente is based also on consultations. Hindi naman yan produkto sa otak ni Briones, no? Yung, ano, yung recommendations at saka yung analysis. It's the entire mancom na inupuan talaga yon at saka tinitingnan nila, nagre-report sila kung anong nangyayari. There are 17 regions. Each of them reports on what is happening in the region. Whenever we meet and then we tell them to, to consult the parents, hindi pwedeng hindi sila magkukonsulta kasi sa paggawa ng material, sa pangangailangan ng space, kailangan ikonsulta din ang local governments. You will recall there was a period na I was batting really for face-to-face, -face, diba? That why I was transmitting the requests of local governments. Mga league of uh, uh, city mayors, for example, wanted face-to-face. -face. And also international schools wanted face-to-face. -face. That, I believe, is consultation. Pero hindi yung libo-libo. These are various groups who who go to us or we go to them and it's happening all the time practically 24 hours a day thank you very much secretary ma'am i have yes ma'am thank you ma'am uh in 2017 there are four million dropouts and because of the pandemic um some teachers from the university of the philippines said that this might double uh, because of the pandemic, dahil takot nga sila and mas prefer daw po nila yung face-to-face -face classes. And some teachers said um, they're, uh, they're proposing to postpone the classes because they are not yet ready yet because of the modules. There's a different module that is designed for ALS learners. So how do we respond to these challenges, ma'am? Uh, ang, ang, ano, ang alternative learning systems for those who cannot go to school in a regular, regular uh, manner, is a very special legacy program of the president. He has an interest in those who are not able to go through the normal ways of, the usual ways of going to school. It is true na bumaba ang numbers, and this is largely because of the downturn in the economy. Kasi marami sa mga all students natin work during the day or work at odd hours, mga fishermen, mga factory workers, uh, and they are also uh, kasama doon ang mga mature people. And nung nawalan sila ng trabaho, uh, nawalan din sila ng uh, time para sa pag-enroll. Pero makahabol sila. And we are now uh, uh, conducting a very vigorous campaign. Uh, our numbers also are improving uh, very much. Hindi na maabot, hindi na ka na magbibilang ng million-million dyan. Yung million-million dyan, nangyari yan uh, sa yung uh, galing sa private sector. Halimbawa, nababawasan na yon dahil bumubuti naman ang ekonomiya. So ang tanong ay, eh, anong gagawin natin itong hindi, maka, hindi sila makapasok? Pinapaalam namin sa kanila na nandyan pa rin ang alternative learning uh, systems. Pwede silang ang kabutihan ng alternative learning, pwede silang pumasok at any time. At saka may sarili silang assessment tests. At saka ngayon, as I said, the numbers are so much better than uh, last June. Uh, halimbawa, dahil the economy is improving, at saka yung mga nagsisiuwian sa probinsya, alam nila na may ALS din sa kanilang probinsya, sa kanilang bayan. At saka local governments uh, are all out in helping them. Nandyan, si, ano, nandyan din si Department of Labor and Employment na tumutulong din. Nandyan ang TESDA. Ang TESDA nagbibigay nag, ng training and upskilling sa ano, mga um, mga vocational skills no, na kailangan ng mga workers natin. 
It's not as if forever and ever and ever mayroon tayong milyon-milyon. Hindi na milyon-milyon ang binibilang natin ngayon. Dahil nag-improve ng sitwasyon, alam na ng mga tao, pag uwi nila, mayroon silang opportunity also to to participate uh, in the ALS program. At saka ang kabuntihan, as I said, they can come in any time. May sarili silang examinations, may sarili silang mga mga uh, teachers. Oo. So sa palagay ko, bababa yung mga numero na yan. At bumababa naman. Okay. okay thank, uh, you, thank you, ma'am. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Jody. That's Jody from, uh, Jody Consilio from uh, Inquirer, ma'am. Ang susunod na magtatanong ay si Bones Magsampol ng Rappler. Bones? Uh, hello po, Secretary Briones. Good PM. Hi, Bones. Uh -huh. Ma'am, uh, I just want to clarify, why po October 5 yung napili natin? This adjustment po ba will be enough for the printing of the modules and the other preparations? for the other modes of learning. Yes, kinakalculate namin yan. Actually, ang hinihingi halimbawa ng Region 4, uh, ang hinihingi ng Region 4 ay up to September 7. Uh -uh. September 7. Tapos, ang hinihingi naman ng uh, NCR is one more week. Pero, sa isip namin, mabuti nang magbigay tayo ng allowance uh, uh -uh. kasi uh, because of the ano, uh, impact on our logistical uh, requirements and activities. Dahil nga, skeleton force na lang ang nag-ooperate ngayon at saka yung pag-produce ng materials, etc. Uh, so, nagbigay tayo ng allowance para hindi na naman sasabihin pag umpisa natin sa September, kung halimbawa September, eh sasabihin na naman na hindi tayo handa. By October, talagang handang-handa tayo. And uh, kami nga, uh, pero uh, it does not have to be um, taken as seriously. Um, October, has, are very, the month of October has very significant uh, importance for, not only for us, but also for the rest of the world. No? Maraming, uh, ano dyan, ang, ang the month of, of October, hopefully tapos na yung mga ulan, tapos na yung mga um, difficulties. Ang ang ina, ang inaano namin kasi nakasalalay kasi sa COVID eh. Uh, lahat na ito ang COVID naman ang ano ang <laughs> nag, nag nag trigger so uh, hopefully by October uh, rather than uh, baka alanganin naman kung isang buwan lang ang i-allot natin sa pag-improve ng COVID situation eh talagang pinaluwagan natin 'yan at 'yun ang ating uh, yun ang uh, decision ng presidente because he wants as much time as possible na ma-enhance talaga ang protection ng mga bata at saka yung mga teachers. Uh -oh. Okay. okay. Ma'am, for, uh, for my next question, I just want to clarify. Uh, you said earlier na this applies both to private and the public schools with the exemption of those uh, basic education curriculum na under the CHED or under the universities. Uh, in that assumption po, paano po yung mga private schools na hindi Ateneo or Lasal or other big schools po na private or under big universities? Pwede po ba uh, silang... Nasabi na namin yan noon pa, noon, noon pa, nung we, when we were uh, uh, saying na ano, we have to stick to August 24, sinabi na namin na may nagbubukas ng June and and nag-uumpisa uh, na sila ng June. Ngayon, uh, nandiyan na, nakaumpisa na sila. Uh, it will be uh, a great source of disappointment for the learners kung titigilan mo yan. At saka nakaboilo na sila, kumbaga. Kasi it takes time for a child to boil into the learning mode. Lalo na ngayon, limang buwan sila na hindi pumapasok. So um ang 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 at aming ano internal uh, policy niyan ay eh, kung nakakaumpisa na sila at umuubra naman but they have to comply with the requirements of uh, of the MECQ or of uh, of the Department of Health. So magko-comply sila kasi otherwise sasabihin na naman na wala kami puso, mga monster kami, ini-expose yung mga teacher, etc. etc. Sa MECQ, kung bawal mag-move around, di hindi sila maka-move around. Tsaka yung mga bata talaga, ah, sinasabi na natin na ah, walang face-to-face, -face, eh kailangan wala silang face-to-face. -face. Ah, originally, ang mga private schools, 
Kasi sanay na sila sa blended learning. Dahil matagal na namang strategy itong blended learning. Sanay na sanay na sila na mayroon talagang component ng face-to-face -face yung kanilang mga curricula. Pero ngayon, they will have to comply with the, with the requirement na walang walang face to face and in the case of the two regions they will have to comply also with the requirements pero nandiyan na sila eh and uh, it would be uh, very uh, difficult also na nagboilo na tapos pipigilin magboilo pipigilin which is also um, uh, very uh, complicated oo, for us ang, ang favorite ko i'm sorry my favorite is siki hor because I'm just across Sikihor. Negros Oriental is just across Sikihor. Eh, Nag-umpisa sila ng June. Eh, sabi namin, eh, kung pipigilin nam, namin sila, eh, naka, naka-umpisa na kung todo tulong na ng, ano, ng involvement ng local government, uh, kung todo involvement na ng mga parents, tapos uh, titigilan natin, uh, that would not be uh, useful at all. Oh. So uh, that's how it is. And besides, uh, we all know the situation of private school teachers who are not under contracts. Kasi uh, as a public, they get paid uh, 12 months a year. Pero yung sa private, kung wala kang contract na ganon, uh, no work, no pay ang classification ng isang teacher. And uh, that is also... Uh, uh, we believe also uh, inhuman because they are also qualified and they also know what they are doing and uh, we have to give them that opportunity to share their knowledge with the children as well. Okay, thank you so much ma'am. Uh, Bons, uh, may follow-up ka? Uh, follow-up question or okay na? Hello Bons? Na wala ata si Bonds, ma'am. Okay. Um, oh, so, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ma'am, just want to clarify lang din para din clear. Uh, ito po, can private schools po decide on their own? Parang natanong na po, po ito kanina, pero para lang din malinaw regarding uh -huh. this, even this postponement. Uh, yung sa uh, yung sa postponement, uh, private schools are, are under... Uh, under the umbrella also of the Department of Education. And so far as basic education is concerned, yung sa basic education. Pero may sarili din silang mga operations, uh, manual operations activities, which they also uh, comply with. Ang gusto namin, generally, nakakomply sila sa DepEd uh, regulations. As a matter of fact, they're even asking for more autonomy. Uh, na uh, hayaan sila to make their own uh, decisions for adjustments and, and so on and we have to consider this very carefully also ang hindi natin na uh, uh, papansin now we also have this practice of homeschooling kung saan ang mga parents mga mothers uh, they also decide na mas uh, that they are capable of teaching their their pupil their children and yung iba naman ang uh, homeschooling na expand na to little schools uh, in the homes of of the teachers etc hindi lamang yung mother teaching her children but perhaps uh, an institu institutionalized uh, mechanism na nagtuturo ka ng ilan very limited na enrollment but of course it's it's also very uh, expensive but that is allowed under uh, certain conditions and regulations as an approach also to effective learning Okay. So ma'am, just last one final question. Uh, for those private schools po na syempre may extend tayo ng another two months, is DepEd considering po giving uh, financial aid or assistance to private school teachers na magiging jobless na naman for another two months? Uh, alam mo, ang decision na yan, hindi isa DepEd because uh, I have always sympathized with the uh, status of private school teachers. Let me uh, share with you without identifying uh, names. Uh, I know someone from the University of the Philippines who has a PhD in education. 
I used to, no, he has a PhD in mathematics. And I cannot even understand his dissertation. Uh, kasi ganun ka, ano, ka, kalalim yung kanyang uh, dissertation. And uh, he transferred from UP, which is a public institution, to a private institution because he was attracted by the terms. Ngayon, naabutan na siya. Ay, hindi naman siya 12 months. So, 6 months na siya. PhD in mathematics. Na walang sweldo. Na walang trabaho. Na, while we are scrounging around for teachers of mathematics. So, uh, this, th these are examples of... Uh, the uh, the disparities which have to be uh, uh, resolved and um, my my views about private school teachers of course are are, are well known no and uh, I understand that some uh, congressmen because hindi sa amin ng ano we have nothing in our budget for private school teachers ang ang binibigay is for our own public school teachers who are paid uh, twelve months uh, a year. So, uh, I, um, I understand that there are congressmen and mabuti naman yan, uh, members of the legislature who are trying to, to do something about it. We have discussed this in the IA, in the IATF, the plight of these teachers. By the way, we cannot generalize naman for all private school teachers kasi yung mga private school teachers na may contract for 12 months na after ano na sila very senior na eh ano uh, they are not uh, affected at all ang medyo affected yung ano uh, no work no pay uh, principle which applies to those na walang contracts for 12 uh, for uh, an entire uh, year like uh, this friend of mine no so um uh, this is these are the realities of the situation and uh, People are looking for, various groups are looking for solutions, but not DepEd. DepEd does not have uh, provision in its own uh, budget. It will probably be a national decision. And right now, the Bayanihan law is, uh, I believe, in under, is under consideration. And some members of the legislature are thinking of ways of uh, helping out this uh, private school teachers who are jobless at, at, at this time. And uh, nasa listahan namin yan ng mga, uh, as I said, mga uh, um, costs of, 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 of uh, the delays na which have to be looked at uh, realistically and very uh, carefully. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, maraming salamat, Bonds. No? Ang susunod na magtatanong ay si Jasmine Romero ng ABS-CBN. Jasmine? Hi, Jasmine. Uh, good, good afternoon, Secretary. Good afternoon po sa iba nating mga kasama dyan. Um, ang tatanong ko po ay, ano po ba yung basis kung bakit October 5 po ang napag na ng DepEd? At ano po yung mga events leading to October 5 na nakaschedule? Kasi uh, ang, ang iniisip natin, di ba, August 24, and uh, nakalatag na yung lahat ng mga activities up to August 24. Tapos nagkaroon ng problema ang dalawang regions, and they constitute at least a third of the learner population. Dalawang regions lang yon pero ganun sila ka, kalaki, lalo na ang Region 4A. At saka nandyan si NCR, of course, pero mas malaki talaga ang Region 4A. Ngayon, ah, uh, so those those adjustments have to be um, made um, as well, no? Paano pili yung yung October? Sinabi ko na kanina na ang request ng Region 4A ay September, September. Tapos ang request naman ni ng NCR is up to perhaps uh, third week of September. Kasi nahati yung aming workforce, kasi skeletal workforce na lang. Uh, and maraming complicating factors because of the risk classification uh, involved. Now, ang sabi namin, 
pwede namang uh, uh, bigyan natin ng space talaga na parang reading ready na, masigurado na talaga tayo na nandiyan na lahat na pangangailangan for this to Crucial kasi itong dalawang regions na ito eh. Uh, you're thinking NCR, uh, you're thinking uh, 4A, which is the industrial hub of, 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 the, of the country, no? and has a huge, uh, very varied uh, population. So, um, we began at an allowance up to uh, uh, October. Actually, in isip din yung September, pero ang gusto ng President October, sabi niya, as much space as possible, yun ang gusto niya. Kasi pwede naman August, pwede September, pwede October, ay eh, October ang pinili niya. Para mas may panahon talaga. Ang consideration niya is, uh, kami ang consideration namin, and you know all the factors that we are considering in addition to COVID. Ang consideration ni President is essentially COVID and the health situation. Yun ang uh, consideration niya, primary consideration na hopefully by October, may ano na may may glimmer of uh, hope already an improvement uh, in the covid side see uh, um second question po um secretary meron lang po nagpapatanong from our kababayans mga OFWs po no ang tatanong po sila kung kasama rin po ba sa rescheduling ng school opening ang mga Philippine schools overseas uh, yung mga schools overseas, they will have to comply with the, in the same manner that yung mga uh, uh, international schools na nandito sa Pilipinas have to comply with their own regulations. They will have to comply with the re regulations of the host country. So at the same time, they get uh, their permits also from us, pero largely in terms of the curriculum. Pero yung mga other requirements, those are imposed by the host country uh, itself. So, um, yun ang ano, kasi mayroong mga, mga countries, mag-umpisa sila September, may, mayroong kung anong buwan, eh, because that is determined by, by the climate, eh, uh, they comply kung kailan yun. So, uh, iba yung sitwasyon ng mga international schools abroad. And I have had occasion also to to visit uh, some of, of these schools. Ang ating interest lamang, Jasmine, is that our curriculum is uh, retained and uh, nagdadagdag sila ng other, other aspects. For example, I noticed they're very, very strong in sports kasi many of, of the children have mixed uh, parentage. So uh, kung basketball ang pag-uusapan mo, they're very, very tall and they're very, very, very big in the some of the, the countries. So mayroon talagang napaka-deep uh, interest in sports, for example. So um, nag-a-adjust and you have to comply with the laws of the country. Thank you. Last question na lang po. Um, meron na po ba tayong latest figures on COVID? Yung mga teachers po, tsaka mga personal na nakakontract po ng disease. At tsaka meron na po, pala, paano po palalakasin ng DepEd yung measures para kung sakaling matuloy po yung October 5, na school opening, hindi po sila mahahawa? Paano sila mahahawa? Kung mahahawa sila, hindi sa DepEd, Jasmine. Dahil hindi naman sila lalabas. Wala namang face-to-face. At saka ngayon, very minimal yung may mga COVID cases. Mabibilang mo lang sa daliri ng isang kamay. Dahil nga, hindi, pa, hindi naman nagtuturo ngayon ang mga teachers. May mga kaso tayo, pero iilan-ilan lamang na mga teachers. At uh, mataas naman ang recovery rate. Uh, Mayroon, of course, unavoidable na mayroon ding uh, pumapanaw pero may mga complicating uh, complicating uh, illnesses uh, yun. Ang alam ko, isa. Oo. Isipin mo, 900,000 sila. This is because hindi naman sila pumapasok at this time. So, uh, uh, mahirap nating ititrace, for example, to sinabi ko na nga yun, ay sabihin na naman wala akong puso. Eh, hindi natin matitrace agad-agad kung depend ang pinanggalingan ng isang uh, infection. At the time na hindi naman nagtuturo ang mga teachers, hindi naman lumalabas. 
Pero kahit uh, ano, uh, we, have to, we have to comply also uh, with the requirements of the Department of Health. And we are looking already, we are identifying funds. Nandiyan naman si Yusik Ann, pwede makabigay sa iyo ng mga detalye kung paano natin maalagaan kung mayroon man tayo. Maski na sabihin natin na hindi matitrace sa DEPED, tinutulungan pa rin natin. Sinabi ko na yan sa iyo, Jasmine, eh. sa maraming nagtatanong, lahat na nagkakasakit, tinutulungan talaga natin ngayon. Hindi naman tayo nagtatanong, oy sa DEPED building mo ba yan ako? Ha? Sa DEPED webinar mo ba yan ako? Ha? Hindi. Tinutulungan naman talaga sila. Either uh, voluntary, kasi there are uh, organizations. I don't know about other organizations, but I know the professional organizations like uh, uh, mga supervisors, mga principals, mga uh, non-teaching uh, na organized. Mayroon silang sariling pondo nila. At saka kami, mayroon naman kaming ma-identify na mga funding na wala pang record na alam ko na hindi namin tinutulungan ang isang teacher. At saka, no questions asked na yun, Jasmine, sa mga ganong klaseng uh, uh, instances. Uh, thank you so much, okay. ma'am. Uh, Salamat sana. po. Uh, Jasmine, uh, siguro may additional si uh, Yusek Ann, ma'am, about yung uh, assistance na binibigay natin, yung mga benefits po. Yusek Ann, go ahead. Hi, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, good afternoon, Secretary, and to our, our media partners and to the public as well. Ma'am, meron tayong 32,000 audience earlier, so they really are listening to your announcement. And um, just an update about the question of Jasmine on the welfare of our personnel. Uh, ang update po is through the Office of Music, Jess Mateo, we are coordinating with PhilHealth so that we can have an an accommodation that is uh, really uh, fit for our teacher personnel who will be out in the uh, uh, work area. Uh, as well as uh, coordination with BBM and, Co and Commission on Audit as well. We'd like to take this opportunity to clarify the answer that I provided in our last press call meeting. Uh, again, your question po don is very specific. Do we have a debt budget? So again, we will uh, we will insist that there is none in our budget, but kung meron pong may bibigay sa atin, and this is a question that I, we are directing to DBM and to the lawmakers as well, kasi ang budget po ay pinapasa bilang uh, batas, uh, kung ma-authorize tayo, and then we will do it. So ngayon po, we are limited and constrained to what we have right now, and what we have is the protection, the disinfection, the, the contamination, provision of all supplies that we need, and uh, partnership and coordination with the Department of Health, the Field Health, and the local government units. So lahat sa ay pinag-speak natin, ma'am, at yung ating employee welfare division are all doing their best to have this uh, disseminated as a simple information na po pwede po maitindihan lahat ng person natin. Sige po, ma'am. At, at saka experience natin, Jasmine, uh, ang talagang uh, agency which oversees the health not only of our teachers but uh, all Filipinos, we coordinate very closely with them. Sila ang nagtulong, nagtutulong sa atin kung kailangan i-hospitalize ang isang pasyente which does not happen naman very, 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 very often. No? Uh, nagbibigay ng advice. Uh, halimbawa, tumutulong sila kung kailangan ipaswab o uh, pa-examine ang isang, uh, ang, uh, isang uh, employee uh, natin. Kasi yun ang arena ng ano, like kami, ang arena namin ay education, ang arena ng Department of Health ay Health. So we work uh, very closely uh, together. Lalo na ngayon na uh, uh, napagbigyan na natin yung request na nila na 50% of our schools will be used as uh, quarantine uh, facilities, eh, uh, we expect uh, also the same measure of care. Tsaka binibigyan talaga tayo ng attention whenever nagre-request tayo na tulungan yung tao natin wherever. And as I said, usually uh, the supervisors, the bosses, the principals, and the fellow teachers themselves uh, go out of their way at saka kasi ang tinatanong mo, mayroon bang public funds na uh, uh, magagamit dito? Mayroon, pero limited. 
and we have to work, as I said, with the Department of Health. Pero yung mga organizations natin sa loob ng ano ng uh, Department of Education, talagang nagtutulungan sila. At saka, hindi na sila kailangan pagsabihan. Uh, gumagawa na gumagawa na sila. Kasi ang worry ng mga teachers na nag-aano sa adjustment, eh baka papabayaan sila. Wala pa kaming instance, wala akong instance na alam na pinapabayaan ng isang teacher. And no questions asked yan. Hindi lang namin mabigay yung mga pangalan at etc. because uh, we have to deal also with the Privacy Commission uh, which is very sensitive about revealing names and until unless uh, it is really uh, very important like policy makers they have to reveal. Uh, pero uh, for others um, we, we have to deal also with the Privacy Commission uh, as well. Uh -oh. Di na, tsaka ganun ang ugali ng Pilipino eh. Ganun ang ugali ng Filipino organizations. Hahanapan at hahanapan niya ng paraan. Ang ayaw lang namin, binagbabawal namin, yung mga nagkukunwari na sila ay si Secretary Briones na nagpa-fundraising para sa mga pasyente ng COVID o biktima ng bagyo. Pwede bang magdeposito kayo sa ganitong bank account? Kasi hindi kami nagsusulisit ng pera unless established talaga na institution no at uh, kuminsan naman yung iba dahil natatat sila sa istorya eh bigay ka agad deposit ka agad at malalaki naman pa naman kuminsan yung amount so kung pwede lang dahil nasa media kayo paki-warning naman sa publiko na hindi sila uh, mag i-check nila yung mga humihingi ng kontribusyon Uh, sa kanila hingil sa mga uh, biktima ng uh, sakuna o bagyo o, o, o COVID. Pero so far, Jasmine, hindi namin pinapabayaan yung mga tao namin. Pag meron man, pero ngayon ay kunting-kunti lang dahil I already explained uh, the situation in the department compared perhaps for example to one department na isang division o isang di sub department na ano na halos lahat matatamaan ng covid hindi yan nangyayari sa deped walang walang ganon okay copy na secretary okay. marami pong salamat thank you po uh, thank you so much ma'am ma'am ang susunod na magtatanong ay si Noel Talakay po ng uh, Malaya Noel, go ahead. Noel? Hello po. Ayun. Hello. Hello, naririnig niyo na po ba ako? Yes, uh, very clear. Ma'am? Okay lang po ba Hi, Secretary. Po? Good afternoon po. Secretary, i-clarify ko lang po, since ex uh, extended na po yung opening of classes, yung ganun din po ba yung pagsasara ng school year 2020 to 2021? Mababago rin po ba? O mag-stay po sa April or uh -huh. March? Yun ang kahirapan. Kailangan talaga namin uh, ang challenge kasi i-reprogram namin yung uh, uh, closing dahil uh, ang batas nag-specify ng uh, number of, or equivalent number uh, of days. Pero since we are moving, uh, kailangan na um, i-adjust yan. Ang isang makaka ano makaka-complicate ng matters of course is already preparation for elections sa ibang mga tao, elections in their mind already. At saka yung sunod-sunod na holidays, kasi dadating si Holy Week, dadating ang mga uh, fiesta, and uh, so kasi locally uh, declared holidays ito by the local government. So, yan, dapat uh, i-adjust and mag-find tayo ng equivalences, mga make-up classes. At saka yung sa batas na bago ay sinasabi na mag-hold ng Saturday classes ang request ko sana, hindi natin sabihing Saturday kasi may mga tao naman na nagsasamba sila uh, on, on Saturdays. At hindi lamang yung mga Seventh-day Adventists. Uh, marami ding ibang grupo na nag-worship on Saturdays. So uh, kung anong days na available para maka-make up yung uh, mga bata. Pero definitely uh, adjustments have to be 
made dahil mahuhuli tayo ng ano mga other uh, public events as we approach summer and as we move closer to the elections. May yeah. may specific date na po ba kung or months kung kailan po yung yung end ng school year? Na na na, na ano niyo na po ba yun ma'am na kumbaga na plano niyo na po ba? Ma'am, naka-mute po ata kayo. Ma'am. Sorry. Uh, yung question about the closing of classes, that has to be adjusted kasi earlier assumption was August 24. Nung hindi pa naka-decide si President, eh, August 24 ang ano. Pero ngayon, that has to be to be uh, moved at saka uh, it will be a very uh, ano challenging uh, task. Tapos halimbawa, yung mga dalawang sets of holidays yan, Christmas, uh, Holy Week, and other local holidays which are declared usually also by the local governments. Ang kabutihan na lang, virtual tayo, so uh, makaka-adjust siguro naman tayo. So as of this time po, wala pa pong plano kung kailan ba talaga yung specific? Paplanohin na yan ngayon. Mag- we'll be actually, we are scheduled to have a workshop today uh, with the with the MANCOM. At saka we are nag-issue na kami ng instructions sa ating mga regional uh, directors sa mga schools na mag-workout na sila kung paano nila ma, ano, maka-adjust sa uh, itong bagong uh, schedule. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Secretary, one more question po. Yung pag-extend po ng, ng class opening uh, sa October 5, is it safe to say na nakikinig din yung uh, DepEd sa ibang gusto ng mga parents na gusto nila i-move? Sinabi naman namin yan na as early as, a- as April, nag- nagko-consultation process na kami. At saka isang bahagi, of course, yung view ng mga parents. Ma- ma- maraming, maraming aspetong uh, tinitingnan yan. Ang primary is really the status of COVID mm-hmm. and the status of those two regions which compose uh, practically one-third of the learner populations na very uh, crucial uh, crucial na crucial itong dalawang lugar na ito maaffected yung kanilang uh, uh, activities itong dalawang region na ito this is why uh, i was uh, telling my uh, members of the excom some members of the excom na uh, we have to make adjustments for the places na low risk naman ang assessment of zero risk ang assessment because there are places na zero risk there are places na na no risk uh, at all and so uh, we, we have to uh, consider also naman their situation even as we think of NCR ang ang consideration dito i just like to emphasize is largely the, the health aspect na ang uh, the president is looking forward na by October, the latest by October, may glimmer of ano na, uh, hope and uh, possibilities na makagawa na ng ma- maayos na scheduling. COVID is the, ano, the reason for this. And uh, so we have to, con- yung ibang considerations, we will have to make allowances which you already know and which I have always uh, mentioned to you. Not you know well, but to all of the, to the public. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Pa. Uh-oh. Secretary, one more question. Kasi yesterday, you mentioned na 50% ng school gagamitin for um, quarantine facilities. Um, Secretary, pwede ko ba malaman kung ilang now equivalent to how many numbers po yung 50% na yun? Ang request kasi ni Secretary ano ni Secretary Duque ay NCR kasi mm-hmm. ang NCR ang, ang problemado. So ang, ang estimate namin yan about there are kung kasi primero sabi niya all schools sabi ko sa kanya baka hindi na Manila makayanan yung yung all schools no. So uh, ang estimate is about 17,000 classrooms yan. Palagay ko hindi yan mauubos. Mm-hmm. Kasi Dito, nagbibuild ng mga uh, uh, structures ang DPWH kasi hahabulin din ng DPWH ang ng pag-build ng mga various structures. Ang, kla- ang klaro may numbers kami is NCR kasi sa ibang mga places na low risk, 
hindi naman ganun ka hindi naman ganun ka uh, urgent yung pangangailangan so maximum yan but uh, it does not mean na uh, they are obliged that they have to fill up kasi kung isolation kasi na well eh, one one patient per room yan eh Uh, pag, pag, uh, pag isolate natin dahil uh, um, I underwent that I had to stay in one room also by myself no? when I underwent isolation otherwise it's it's no use at saka separate ano, banyo separate uh, toilet yung mga ganong klaseng requirements so yung aming 17,000 na 50% might hindi naman siguro lahat magagamit dahil hindi naman practical na gagamitin yung mga schools na yan. Lalo na kung hahabol si DPWH kasi mahabol sila ng pag-build ng facilities. Oo. Secretary, isa lang po talaga. Kasi na-remember oh. ko before na yung DepEd nag, naglabas, nag-issue ng um, guidelines pagdating po sa gagawin pasi, uh, facility ng mga uh, classroom o school. Same pa rin po ba o may nagbago? Nasa mga uh, guidelines. Yung before, yung sabi mo, dapat nagre-request yung LGU, tapos may kaakibat ng DOH ng mga guidelines. Ganun pa rin po ba? Uh, ganun, ganun pa rin, pero kailan bilisan. Kasi in principle, kasi noon, eh, tinatawag natin case-to-case basis yan. Pag may kailangan, yung lalapit, tatawag, etc. Pero b- bilisan, bilisan yon Pero yung requirements nandoon pa rin, like sinabi ko yan sa IATF, na We will not encourage halimbawa the use of schools which are located in crowded areas. Uh, that would that would be uh, very uh, dangerous, no? We will not encourage the use of schools na uh, kung tailangan tubig <laughs> kasi uh, re- requirement yan. Uh, baka tuniladang alcohol ang magagamit natin dyan. At saka preferably sana ang ideal is malapit sa isang health facility dahil kung isolation ang iniisip nila uh, at least three times ang pag-monitor ng ano diyan eh ng vital signs eh so sabi namin na sana may meron talagang health team na ano inassure naman kami ni Secretary Duque uh, but as to whether they will be able to uh, Uh, achieve that of course that is uh, the challenge also that they are facing so available yon eh kung hindi magqualify yung mga schools namin eh kaya hahabol yung DPWH nandoon naman yung uh, ibang mga facilities na malalaki lalo na sa sa metro uh, Manila oo saka ay isa pa final noel na pandagdag po diyan eh Para talaga akong nanay na aw lola na pinoprotekta si ma, si Apo. Eh yung ano yung um, marami ding mga city mayors na nagre-request sila ng face-to-face uh, sessions para sa mga uh, estudyante eventually no in 2021 gusto nila. Sabi namin kung gusto niyo yung face-to-face, wag ninyo yung paggamit yung schools ninyo for quarantine. Hindi pwede na mayroon kang isang building na pang-quarantine o pang-isolation pang at the same time may isa kang building kung saan ka nag-face-to-face o may building ka na kung saan nag na ang mga teacher. It's it's one or the other. Yun, yun ang, ang, ang sabi ko because we cannot be mixing up uh, uh, people. Yun. Isa, isang bagong dagdag ko yun aside from the WHO requirements. Thank you okay, po. Thank you, so thank you Sir Jun. Thank you Sir Secretary. Uh, before magtanong yung ating panghuling uh, kasamahan sa media ma'am na magtatanong ngayon, may mga follow-up lang po dito. Uh, ma'am, yung tanong po is, will, will enrollment now resume since classes have been moved to October daw po? Uh, actually, uh, class uh, enrollment has been going on kasi even before uh, ano, even before COVID, mayroon na tayong uh, circular saying that if a child can comply with 80% of the required hours that he should be spending for studying and for schooling, eh, uh, pwede siyang mag, mag late enrollment. Ang konsepto niya na itawag ay late enrollment. Actually, every day the numbers change. Lumalaki at lumalaki ang numbers ng enrollees natin. Kagaya ng tanong kanina ni 
ni uh, uh, inquirer about about ano uh, about uh, alternative learning every day the numbers on alternative learning systems also increased dahil na discover nila na nandiyan pa pala si si ALS no so uh, uh, nagbabago yan and they can of course they can enroll basta makahabol sila kasi ang kondisyon yan hahabolin nila yung mga uh, requirements at saka may mga bata naman na mabilis mag-pick up although mayroon yung mga bata din na kailangan tulungan sila that's where the teacher comes in uh -oh. all right thank you so much ma'am okay pwede uh, mag-enroll late enrollment ang tawag niyan yeah uh -huh. ang last na magtatanong ma'am ay si uh, Dante Amante po ng UNTV Dante go ahead Dante, uh, offline at uh, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, may... Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I'll wrap up ko lang po na ma'am. So, kanina we said that we are ready, red, ready, ready. We're very much ready on October 5. So, that means all modules, at least for two weeks worth, ma'am been already downloaded and distributed to all school divisions nationwide and the basic minimum health standards that you set in your earlier memo for teachers and students are already in place by October 5? Yeah, absolutely. Kasi nga, we could have done it uh, August 24, but then the the new qualification of the two regions uh, came in. Na kaya na didiskarel yung uh, scheduling nila at saka malaking uh, grupo yung estudyante nila. Pero by that time, dapat uh, wala, walang excuses na to be ready. If we, we, we are already psyching ourselves for, to be ready by August 24, we will be more than ready by October 5. Mm -hmm. October 5 is the first week mm -hmm. uh, of, 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 of the month at saka yun ang pinili na date ni, ano, ni Presidente. Kasi mm -hmm. gusto niya as, as far as possible para may chance yung mga bata na ma-increase yung level of safety nila. Uh -huh. Yung sinabi po natin na we have glimmer of hope na po by October 5, that means there's a higher possibility that we get vaccine. Yun po ba yung ibig sabihin ng glimmer of hope that the President um, earlier mentioned? Uh, in that sense, pero it's not only the vaccine, it's really uh, halimbawa controlling the number of, of new uh, infections uh, right now uh, ang level ng recoveries natin are very very much higher more than double uh, those who uh, than those uh, who do not recover ang taas taas na talaga ng recovery rate natin mas lalo pa yung pataasan dapat so mm -hmm. hindi lamang yung vaccine pero all the other uh, components of, of analytics no Tsaka importante, one of the important things is the cooperation of the community. Kailangan may, may makikita sana tayo na may mga changes in behavior na maski hindi natin gusto, uh, like um, napapansin natin na uh, kung uh, itong mga infections na ito nangyayari pa may pamilya. Kung minsan hindi galing sa opisina eh. Kasi kung sarado ang opisina, hindi naman sila pumapasok. Eh halimbawa, isang member ng family uh, pumapasok. Pagdating, sumusunod ng lahat na requirements. Pagdating sa bahay, hindi naman nagtatanggal ng sapatos, hindi naman nagpapaligo. Kasi kung galing ka sa labas, kailangan maligo ka. Uh, tapos, pareho lang yung bathroom, pareho lang yung toilet, tapos isang kama, uh, isang uh, kwarto ang sineshare. So, madali ang level of infection. So, kung ma-moderate natin yan, at saka marami ng taktika ang iniisip ang mga local governments at saka ang DILG, kung paano nila ma-ano itong aspeto ng uh, kultura natin na ayaw natin mag maghiwa-hiwalay at saka relax tayo kasi nasa bahay na natin. At saka nagagalit tayo kung pinapakialaman tayo kung anong ginagawa natin sa bahay natin. Pero uh, lumalabas, by families ang mga ang rate ng infection. So it's not only the vaccine, it's really uh, uh, all other uh, all uh, aspects of, of, of fighting COVID which have to be implemented uh, in a much uh, more uh, vigorous uh, manner. <laughs> 
kumbaga like like ako when I was isolated uh, I, I had to I was I was isolated in Batangas my husband was isolated in Lang Center my son was isolated in Marikina dahil uh, because of the the the, the space uh, uh, constraints at saka kasi ano mahirap pong primero sa, sa, sa bahay separate ang banyo separate ang toilet pero nung talagang confirmed ako eh, hindi na pumayag ang ang, ang uh, doktor dahil vulnerable age ako vulnerable age ang husband ko so we had to be separated parang ganun so uh, kung sana na dinidiscourage na by the way ang home quarantine kasi sa home quarantine madali din yung <laughs> Madali din yun na uh, uh, i-ignore na home quarantine naman ako. Uh, so okay lang. Di ba karamihan sa atin nag-home quarantine. Ang policy ngayon sa Department eh, Department of Health is to discourage home quarantine because we tend to be careless uh, when we are at home. Because we are relaxed. It is our home. It is our castle. It's nobody's business how how we move around in our home. We eat together, we laugh together, and, and we forget all about COVID. That's why we have homes, di ba? But uh, that has to be uh, ingrained, uh, hopefully, uh, along with uh, the hopes for the vaccine. Hindi lang vaccine. Mm -hmm. uh, that's hey, thank you so much, uh, uh, Jody. Ma'am, Titante is online. Uh, may tanong po siya dito. Uh, pero I think nasagot na ito, ma'am, yung uh, sabi dito is paano po yung mga stand-alone private schools daw? Uh, are they under uh, DepEd mandate? Uh, are they mandated to open on October 5? Yung mga stand-alone na private schools? Yes, apa? Uh, as I said, yung halimbawa, yung, ano, yung uh, mga uh, homeschooling ay nasa bahay, nasa bahay lang naman sila tinuturuan sila ng nanay nila so uh, uh, mas na uh, mas na re regulate sila mas na mo monitor ang policy namin kung nakaumpisa na sila eh i monitor i monitor yan ng uh, Department of Education um, magre-report sila pero hindi namin sasabihin hoy tumigil kayo pero sumunod sila sa requirements ng IATF sumunod sila sa requirements ng Department of Health. Ang determinant dyan is not so much DepEd anymore. Dahil nandiyan na sila eh. But uh, what IATF and what the Department of Health requires of them, kasi nasa loob sila ng, ng, ng bahay, ang nanay supposedly ang nagtuturo o ang yaya o ang si ate ang nagtuturo ng bata, kailangan masunod yung mga requirements ng Department of Health at uh, mamomonitor yan kaya medyo mas uh, mas uh, in a way uh, ang monitoring is more careful uh, at this time even if we have homeschooling for example mm -hmm. maraming salamat ma'am ito yun ito ata yung tanong na pang closing statement yun na tanong po tanong po ito ni uh, Claude ng Business Mirror ang tanong niya what is your advice sa mga magulang or any activity in the home since their children will have to wait for over a month before the school opening up. Ano po yung suggestion ninyo daw? Uh, ang, ang aking suggestment, kasi nandyan naman ang schools, you go through the, you go through the use, the, ano, yung, you go through the, um, ano nga ito, simulation exercises. Maski wala pang klaseng formal, nasa bahay kayo, you can do it. May mga mothers, alam mo, they access already the DepEd Commons. And uh, I have been receiving very good feedback uh, on DepEd Commons uh, from mothers, even from other countries. Uh, tinuturuan nila yung mga anak nila, yung, yung mga mothers na may panahon o may inclination because not all mothers also are inclined to, to teach uh, children. So, uh, marami silang magagawa dahil nasa, samantalang nasa loob sila ng bahay. Ako, ang suggestion ko ay mag-access ng DepEd Commons. Kung available na yung TV programs, ano, uh, Yusik Alain, uh, 
ma-access na ba ang TV programs at saka baka makasagot si Yusik Elaine. Ang radio, uh, nandyan na. Gamitin yan. Hindi yung maghihintay tayo ng October 5. Parang uh, ano ba yung play na ano waiting for Godot, waiting for October 5, waiting for August 24. But kailangan... Uh, It is to your advantage if you already start teaching your own uh, children, si ate, si yaya, um, uh, makakatulong, or even teacher. Oh, oh, yun, yun ini-encourage namin yung teacher. That's why we want them to keep an eye on the students that are assigned uh, to them. Hindi naman kailangan bibisitain para ma-expose, kasi ma-expose sila at lahat. Ay ang ang ano nakikita natin sa simulations, pwede namang i-text. Sabihin ay walang cellphone. Pwede namang tawagan, pwede namang makinig sa radyo ng mga announcements dahil may mga successful radio programs na nakita natin 'yan sa Davao de Oro o o or sa ano sa Sarangani, no? Uh, may isang mother na uh, in-illustrate yan sa ano, yung at- aming last press conference with uh, spokesman Harry, spokesperson Harry, na isang mother, pito yung anak niya. Nakayanan niya na ano, nakayanan niyang uh, ituruan o monitor. Kasi ang iba sabi, gago ka talaga, Briones, paano mo maturuan iba't ibang grado, uh, iba't ibang program. Hindi naman yun sabay-sabay eh. Sineschedule naman yan. Uh, siguro hindi naman kami ganun kagago na same hour uh, ang isang uh, klase. Nakaschedule yan uh, on a day-to-day basis in arrangement with the service uh, provider. So nagagawa niya yun, kitang-kita yung pitong anak niya na parang hagdan na nakakayanan niyang uh, turuan no? uh, isang nanay. Pero nakikinig din siya kung anong nangyayari, nag-attend siya ng mga, uh, brief, mga briefing, tsaka modular ang ginamit niya. Ang maganda sa Maguindanao is talagang ano, radio at ICT, which is also uh, very, very interesting. Nakakatuwa yung iba't ibang modalities. Uh, yung sa Sarangani, makita mo yung nanay umiiyak talaga dahil hindi siya nakapag... She has never studied hindi siya, hindi siya nakakapag-aral. Ngayon, mayroon na siyang anak na, na nag-aaral. At siya din, siyempre, nag-aaral din siya. Kasama siya nag-aaral. Uh, the, the thing is to give hope to the children, to give hope to the parents, and to ensure uh, continuity. Uh, that learning, uh, ilang beses ko na yan sinabi, na ang, ang Vietnam, mayo pa sila nagbukas ng klase. Ang 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 uh, ano ang uh, Singapore eh naghahanda na sila for their national exams. At saka by the way, yung yung ano nagtataka kayo bakit nag-interest ako sa Pasig no sa yung mga assignment ng cabinet members on the COVID programs. I'm very interested in Pasig because ang rating ng Pasig sa reading sa science and mathematics is higher than the ratings of OECD countries sing average scores nila i'm interested in region 6 because the rating of region 6 kaya no nagsabi yung uh, halimbawa isang opisyal na hindi sila magkaklase sa uh, region 6 sa Iloilo at parang ang sakit sa puso ko there i know that they excel in in mathematics this is region 6 kasi ang nakikita natin, yung sinasabi natin, ngayon nagbabagsakan, pero you have 20 schools in the Philippines whose scores in the PISA examination are very much higher than the scores of the OECD countries. Ano itong mga OECD countries? Ito yung mga US of, mga US of A, mga, mga, mga uh, Britain, mga Germany, mga kung ano-anong countries sa European. But we got scores higher. Kaya kung halimbawa sa... Tigilan natin ang Pasig, tigilan natin ang Region 6, tigilan natin halimbawa ang Baguio. Napagkagaling sa English ng Baguio at naka, nagtataka yung iba, bakit uh, is high school in the mountains ay eh, marunong mag-English yung mga bata? Or you go to Apayao, bakit marunong mag-English yung mga, mga bata? Anong nasa genes nila? So, uh, 
sayang kung hindi natin ito ipagpatuloy. Sayang kung hindi tayo makabigay ng ganong klaseng opportunity sa ating mga kabataan. Dami ko na namang okay, sinabi. Uh, thank you. Kaya huwag na ninyo akong interviewin. Tawag kaya ng tawag ng interview. At tanggap kaya ng mahabang-mahabang briefing. Hindi na briefing yan. Eh, ano yan. Longevity na yan. <laughs> Sige. Longing. Oo. <laughs> I think I have to uh, cut this uh, press conference. Maraming salamat po sa ating mga executive Baka may mga contributions ang ating executives. Bumubawi lang ako dyan dahil uh, for two weeks hindi ako nagpapa-interview dahil dinidiscuss namin itong mga uh, issues na ito uh, with the executive oh, at hindi ako maka uh, say uh, definitively sa on what the decision of the president is. Pero baka yung ating mga yusik asik may mga gusto silang idagdag Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Chance na nang ilang singitan uh, si Secretary na madaldal. <laughs> si Yusek kaya po po ang dito po ata. Uh, Yusek uh, nga po malaluan, sir. Go ahead po. Uh, babati lang ng good afternoon to all our uh, media friends. Uh, thank you. Sinepo. Yes, ma'am po. Pumati lang daw, ma'am. <laughs> Alright. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Yusek Nepo. And of course, to uh, all our media friends uh, who were very quick to respond sa ating emergency press conference. Maraming salamat din po sa mga libo yung mong uh, nakasubaybe kanina sa ating uh, live stream sa DepEd Philippines. Sumabot ata ng 37,000 yung kanyang peak kanina. So, thank you so much. And... Uh, Uh, thank you so much for the good news, ma'am, sa ating mga parents, sa mga learners, at, at sa ating mga kaguruhan. Maraming salamat po at magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Thank you po. Salamat din. Thank you, ma'am. Salamat sa inyo lahat. Thank you.